Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the show. We're very grateful to have you. Um, today we have a very special guest. His name is Blake Wright. He's a teacher, a coach, and best known for his competition and athletic uh, abilities in the Dwayne Johnson's NBC show, The Titan Games. So please welcome to the show again, Blake Wright. Hey, Blake, what's up? Hello? Can, yeah, I can hear you now. Perfect. How you doing? Very well, and yourself? Ah, pretty good. Can't complain. How's uh, so? We're we, we're already recording, just to let you know. Okay. But so, how is uh, how's the coronavirus treating you? Where you are? Um, we're at right now. I'm currently out in Columbus, Georgia, and uh, it's been actually really calm down here. Okay. Uh, now back at home with my folks in Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's getting pretty wild over there. They're required to wear a mask everywhere they go. Yeah. Here it's a little bit more relaxed. So uh, we kind of don't really see much of the effects as much as uh, I think other parts of the country are feeling it. Yeah, I think it depends on where you are. Like my, my wife's family is from Florida, and right now it's like the, the one of the worst places, you know, for the virus, uh -huh. supposedly, you okay. know. So, yeah. So, um, so just kind of to get started. So, like, what do you do for a living? Yeah, so um, uh, currently I'm a, um, a, a teacher and a coach down over here in Manchester. Um, previously was a teacher and coach in Texas before coming up here. Um, so that's basically what I do. I just work with middle school kids and mm -hmm. I coach mainly football and strength and conditioning. Okay, what do you teach? Uh, so previously I was teaching, uh, just got done teaching uh, middle school social studies history. Mm -hmm. And then now um, I'm the head of their PE program now. You're you're ahead of what? I'm sorry. Couldn't the PE program, the physical PE education program. program. Okay. Yeah. So actually, like history during school, and even now, I'm like I'm a big history buff. I love I love history. It's one of my favorite, you know, things to to especially like military tactics and like like ancient, you know, battles and stuff like that. Very cool stuff. So, what got you into like fitness and then coaching and strength and conditioning? Were you always like just a fit guy, or how did that work? Yeah, so um, I guess really uh, kind of start from the beginning. Um, you know, when I was uh, younger, you know, my basic big part of my story is that my uh, my mother, she uh, you know she had me at a very young age. She had me at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, my my biological pop split before um, I was born, and she kind of had me for a while up until uh, my pops Larry, who uh, kind of saw what me and my little brother who was just born. Um, I was eight at the time. Um, he took us in and said that he would unofficially basically adopt us and he raised mm -hmm. us as his own. And that's kind of where fitness really kind of started was with him because he, he was a big uh, Houston Texans fan down there, Oilers in the beginning and then Texans fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he submerged me in football and I just fell in love with the game through him. And uh, so uh, um, as soon as I could, you know, I started playing sports at Little League. So I started getting involved in football, basketball, uh, baseball, those types of things. And then when I got into middle school, I kind of started to narrow it down a little bit more, um, got more into focus into football. And then when I got into the high school level, it was football, powerlifting, and track. And uh, I really found a, um, a home in the weight room because uh, in high school, I was playing an offensive lineman position at varsity, but I was a buck 80 soaking wet. And so I needed to get bigger. I needed to learn how to, you know, get stronger because these guys were twice my size out there. And so I had the heart to play. I just didn't have the, the, the physicality yet. And so that's where I really found um, a love with, with, uh, with powerlifting. I loved being, you know, a strong kid. Um, and that carried me into college where I walked on at Texas State University, uh, played a little bit of D1 ball for about a year there. Um, uh, still being kind of a small guy, I got banged up pretty good and injuries kind of eventually took its toll. And uh, I got out of that and I said, well, I need to find something else to do. I always loved competing. And they didn't have a Texas State or they didn't have a uh, powerful team at the time. And so we started a program from the ground up there and actually competed on national platforms. And I ended up winning a national title, broke three American records. Um, wow. and, and actually now in the process of my kind of pro debut coming up in August. And so from basically it started from him all the way to now, that's kind of where the the love of uh, fitness and sports is going to come from. And I'm sorry, I think I missed that when you said uh, you broke records and your pro debut. In, in what was this again? What the what's the competition? 
so yeah so in powerlifting so in college I was, okay okay yes sir yeah so i was the uh, at the time uh, 2018 i was ranked the number one 93 kilo in the world well in the country mm -hmm. and then uh for college and then i broke three american records in the squat the deadlift and the total which wow. was 600 688 and then i want to say uh 1600 like 35 pounds something like that and so that was at at that time and now i'm actually training for my first uh, pro level event actually uh, here in August, which will be powerlifting, um, and I'm really excited about that. That yeah, that that's very exciting. What what weight are you gonna compete in? Uh, so for this one, I'm gonna be at 105, so 205 to 231. Right now, I'm 225 ish. Mm -hmm. um, I got significantly stronger. Finally, I get big now <laughs> after all these this time of trying. Um, yeah. So but, but yes. Yeah. So um, are you gonna? So it's between you said two o what two o five and two thirty or something like that. Yes, sir. So are you gonna try to like try to get as close to you can, you can to that max? Or are you just gonna stay like kind of where you are? Well, I mean, in powerlifting, it's actually very advantageous to be the lightest man in the class if it doesn't degrade mm -hmm. your 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 strength overall. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't diet down, but if I can be lighter without sacrificing strength, because if I ever tie with anyone. My, the lighter guy wins. Oh, really? So, Interesting. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of advantageous to be a lighter guy. Now, if I, you know, just it's a lot of people, what they'll do is, is they'll get up to like 240, 250, and then they'll cut down just to get into it mm -hmm. um, and compete. Right. You know, and, um, but I'm not that, I'm not uh, muscle mass wise. I'm not going to be that much heavier. Okay. So I'll, I don't mind staying kind of where I'm at right now, but in the long term, I'd like to get up, to like 235 real lean muscle mass mm -hmm. and then kind of cut down and be real competitive um, gotcha, gotcha. so they're, cu they're cutting weight almost like and i come from a from like a grappling background yep. so they're they're cutting weight the same way that you would for like a combat competition where exactly. you cut it right before the show and then and then you rehydrate you know yeah the okay. only difference is i think a lot of uh various fighting sports is they get a 24-hour way in Mm -hmm. uh, but in power, in the one specific, pro, uh, federation that I'm in, they only get a two hour way in. Oh, wow. So you, okay. So you don't have that much time to re amp yeah. up, or, you know, so hard to hi rehydrate in two hours. Yeah. If you've been, yeah, the, it's interesting. So what kind of training are you doing? Like to, to, uh, to compete for a show like that? So, yeah. So, uh, Parleton based upon squat bench and deadlift. That's what we train around those main three. Um, and so a lot of it, um, uh, is frequency training on those three movement patterns, uh, really trying to develop, uh, you know, the triceps, uh, for the bench, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of lats, a lot of back for that deadlift mm -hmm. and then squat is squat, you know, it's just hammering them legs. Yeah. And so I, right now I'm training, uh, I just got done doing six days a week. Now I'm kind of cutting it down to five because it's higher intensity. Um, actually just three days ago, I, I had a personal best of 700 pound squat for three Ooh. reps wow so i was uh, really really happy about that and it's all raw a lot of weight yeah, yeah that's it, a lot of weight mm -hmm. a big big moment for me so that's that's so this week i've been just kind of taking it easy yeah. um and 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 stuff like that but we'll ramp it back up a little bit more in the next few weeks before the meet so there's no like there's no you said it's raw so there's no like uh like shirts and uh, nothing like that it's just yeah you could compete and equipped uh, or mm -hmm. you compete in raw. So raw, you only allowed to have the belts, the wrist wraps, and the mm -hmm. knee sleeves, mm -hmm. and that's it. They won't let anything else. Gotcha, gotcha. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so so going like forward with the sh with the show that you were in, Dwayne Johnson's NBC mm -hmm. show, uh, Titan Games. So how did you get involved with that? Like, well, when did you first hear about it? Did, how did you want, you know? Why did you want to apply for it? Yeah, of course. So um, my my fifth and final year in college um i guess early 2019 i would believe uh, early that year i uh, i saw an ad um and i had recently before this show had applied to be on stoke old steve austin's broken school ranch show mm -hmm. and i actually flew out for that i didn't make the live actual shows of it but i was i actually got to go through the process and i was like man it was so close um and so when i saw this one pop up i said hey I, that's like made for me Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, I was kind of going through a real low in life, uh, having some uh, really big personal issues and then struggling uh, with some injuries that kept me out of the gym. Uh, my grades were kind of dropped and you know, a lot of things were happening all at once. And I really needed to find something new to get into. And uh, I saw that. I saw an ad and um, I went online, very extensive 
um, online process of guest submit videos and do a lot of your biography stuff about yourself and a lot of different things. Um, and then I submitted it and um, I didn't hear anything for maybe six months, seven months. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so I completely forgot about it. Um, I actually ended up going on to graduate, uh, got a job the day I walked down in Tyler, Texas. And, um, I went down and, you know, I was working and, you know, life was good. No big mm -hmm. deal. Um, and then I got a phone call, um, uh, from one of the producers said, Hey, we're, you know, we're from NBC Titan games. We came across your application and we'd, uh, you know, we want to move further. And I was like, Oh, that's awesome. So did a couple more phone interviews. Then we did some Skype interviews and then, um, I got selected as one of the 60 to go down to LA and yeah. um, to be in the tryout. And uh, at the tryout, you know, so they did, they brought 60, so 30 and 30, and then they're going to cut it in half. So you're going to select half of those um, competitors to make the actual show. So is this women and men? Are you saying 30 yeah. and 30? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, 30 males, 30 females from across the country. Mm -hmm. um, just very different backgrounds and, and age groups and everything. I mean, it's a very diverse group with all with the commonality of fitness, which was mm -hmm. really awesome. Um, I don't know. This is one of the biggest things we talk about um, with the other competitors is that I don't know how they did it, but they ended up finding the pretty much the best group of people you could possibly find wow. okay. um, because it was just like amazing. Some of the, the, you know, the connections you make with all the other competitors, just really, really great people. Um, but yeah, so we went out to the combine, they, uh, they strapped us up with some monitors and, um, they measured our, um, they measured our heart rate, and, you know, through a very diff, uh, um, variety of events. So they did like a 40 agility, did a grip test, actually did a deadlift test, which I actually did the best at, which was awesome. super awesome. Um, I, I ended up pulling, uh, 675, um, which at the time was a big deal. Yeah. And so, uh, um, but now you beat well, that. So now, now, six yeah, yeah. Five ain't nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now I'm a little bit more. Uh, yeah. But what was really cool is uh, I did it and they, uh, uh, the producers came up to me and goes, Hey, we just filmed that and we sent it to Dwayne. And I was like, what? And they're like, Oh yeah, we sent it to Dwayne. I'm like, man, that's so cool. Yeah. And actually later on, uh, in the filming process, when we first met Dwayne, he, he signaled me out. And he goes, hey, you're that guy with the deadlift that I got. And he goes, I was on the set of Jumanji when I got that video. And I was like, man, that's pretty cool. He uh, seems like a guy that would appreciate something like that. Yeah, like you don't think of anyone else like being as famous as he is, like caring about something like that. But but he seems like a guy that would see a deadlift video and be like, that's pretty awesome, you know? Yeah. And better yet, I did it all with a, a felt hat on. So uh, uh, I was from Texas, and so I, I wore a, a felt hat. Right. Uh, through the entire combine. I didn't take it off. I did it in the 40. I did it in, in the pro jelly. Everything I did it in, I had it on the whole time. So mm -hmm. that's really caught their attention. Mm -hmm. um, and it made me very recognizable. Right. Because nobody right. else obviously is wearing a cowboy hat. So it was kind of cool to be able yeah, to do smart that. Smart move. Yeah. Smart mm -hmm. move. Yeah. So, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to no, say, so, you, so you, you pass the combine. You get, you get onto the show. And so are you guys like filming – back to back to back are you filming then training then filming like how how does that work yeah so it's it definitely doesn't look how it's filmed um mm -hmm. very very different um but uh, once uh you know once there was we did the combine and there was two weeks that we had to wait to get a call back um and it took a little bit longer because during that period Dwayne's father passed mm -hmm. so and he was initially the one that was going to be given the calls uh, but th with that going on, it kind of lasted a little bit longer. So I actually thought I didn't make the show. I just, cause some people got phone calls, some people didn't. And so I was just like, Oh, I guess I didn't make it. And I was like, okay, well that's that. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I got the call and then we flew down to Atlanta and, um, the first few first, I guess week there pretty much is just doing uh, B roll shots. So just doing things about you and your background and doing a lot of shots about your story um, doing a lot of like, like kind of fake workout scenes, um, and, uh, doing just a lot of different shots. Like everybody had a thing that made them unique. So like my thing was, um, I wore the cowboy hat and then, um, I was known as a chocolate milk man, um, to the point to where like I drank gallons of milk, like on a daily basis. Um, is that, is that something that like you just normally did or is that something yeah. that you do like just for the show? 
No, um, it's something I grew up doing, and uh, it didn't really – I didn't gain the name until I started coaching and teaching. So when I got my first coaching and teaching job, um, at the, to start off with, you know, just out of college, I didn't have any money to my name, and so I was living on somebody's couch. I didn't really, I really couldn't eat, but I was still training like immensely. So I started to, uh, I would get a half gallon of milk, a chocolate milk, and I would drink in the morning. And then I would drink another one for uh, lunch and then a third one for dinner. And that's what I did on, you know, to get my carbs and my protein in. Mm-hmm. And so I'd be sitting there teaching kids with a half gallon of milk in my hand. And so everybody's like, man, you really like that chocolate milk. And I was like, yeah, I do. It's, it's good stuff. And it gets me what I need for now. Uh-huh. And uh, so then they started calling me the chocolate milk man. And, you know, for, uh, you know, Valentine's Day, I had a student bring me one. Um, actually had my entire football team each go get a little one from their cafeteria meal. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, I had 50 of them given to me as a gift for Christmas. Uh, so it, it kind of caught on. So that was one of the big things you know, uh, that was part of my story. It was my background. And then I'm the cowboy hat wearing chocolate milk, man. And that kind of took toll. Yeah. And, uh, so we did a lot of shots with chocolate milk, um, for that duration of that week that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. And so everybody had their own thing. Um, everybody, you know, you had some doctors, you had, we had a monster truck driver, mm-hmm. um, a lot of military men and women. Um, we had a winemaker, you know, just a lot of different, really neat backgrounds. So they did stories that were, you know, specific to those individuals. So then, uh, so yeah, we did that for the first week. And then we had kind of like a meeting and, and we talked about what filming on set would look like. And so then we actually did competition uh, stuff. So basically, you know, on the show, it's like, you'll see things like, oh, tune in next week where we see who wins out of this and this and this. Mm-hmm. When in reality, that competition actually made it happen before this one on the same day. I you see. know, it okay. was, so we did everything just, you know, it was kind of all jumbled up when mm-hmm. we did it, you know, on the show. And then they kind of organized it uh, for when it airs. So we did that for, you know, another week to two weeks. And then if you won, if you kept winning, you stayed longer. Mm-hmm. If you lost, then you left earlier. Right. And that's kind of how that process went. So, when you compete for a particular event, how, do you have any time to like train for that event or prepare yourself for that event? Or it just kind of, you know, at that moment, that's when you go. Yeah. So you'll have the best thing they'll give you is they'll give you, um, a, an introduction to the, so basically if I'm sitting in here, they'll come in and be like, all right, uh, Blake and Steven, who I competed against, you're up next. And so then they'll take us, and we'll go into the actual competition arena and they'll introduce the event to us and we'll look at it. They'll, they'll tell us kind of the rules, regulations, what we're supposed to do, the do's and nots. And then some of it, if it's very like technical, they'll let us do one practice run through it, come back mm-hmm. in, get dressed, all that type of stuff. And then we're competing. We'll go through it. So we don't have any time to, we, you know, we don't have any clue of what the events are unless you watch the season prior and it had some overlap. Mm-hmm. All right um because the wall uh lunar eclipse was mm-hmm. the only one that kind of transferred over that and herkling pool but a lot of them were brand new this year gotcha. so you had no way of really prepping unless you just trained everything makes sense so so let's move on to kind of like your competitions so yeah. with the first one that you did had it like how did you feel about coming tell me like your you know your yeah. feelings on it yeah so the first one was launch pad um and and just for people listening launch pad is you stand in a middle platform um and you're suspended kind of by a, a ring that you're holding on to and you actually have to run and create momentum like a swing and you have to kick these giant panels off uh four panels um off these little sleds mm-hmm. and they're weighted and so you have to run and get momentum and the, and the key is to hit higher up on it so it gets direct because you hit it low it just swings mm-hmm. it doesn't actually throw it off um and I'll say that for me specifically, because, uh, you know, I come from a powerlifting background. Um, Steven, my competitor, was a bodybuilding background. So these were uh, movements that I guess we were both kind of familiar with, and it's not something I ever train. It's more of an acrobatic type style of competition. So um, I felt confident going in. Um, however, it was I, – I couldn't quite anticipate the, the crowd and, and the cameras and everything all at once. Uh, because it, it was a, almost, a, it just overwhelmed me just enough to get me off track in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And I kind of just, like, my game plan just poofed out of my, you know, my mind. And it was, 
it, it, it stresses me out now because I watch it back and I'm like, what was I doing? Um, and so uh, for people who've watched that show, uh, for watched the, our, my episode already, you know, you'll see that I take off and I just don't know. I'm just swinging around with no purpose. Mm -hmm. And so he gets up on me. Uh, he gets up, you know, two to uh, zero, and then three to zero. And then I come back. I finally get mm -hmm. I calm my nerves down. And I come back and I end up catching back up and tying him. And it's three to three. And we're both about to get this last one. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens he hit his swing just a little bit quicker than I did. And I came just right after, and he knocked his panel down, and then I knocked mine down. And then it went boom, boom. And it was killed. I didn't even know who won. You know, right. I was just it, – it really just frustrates me because I it was more of an I, I messed myself up kind of thing mm -hmm. rather than, you know, I was just, you know, incapable of completing the task right. efficiently. Right. I saw that. I You know, I saw both your, uh, your competitions. And uh, – and yeah, in the beginning, it, it like you you were struggling, and he seemed to be knocking them down, like hitting them just right, and they were falling down. And then, of course, you you know you got your composure and you caught up, and then you started knocking them down back to back. I think I think you probably would have won that competition. The problem I thought was his. By the time you got to your last one, his was already hanging off, like at the very edge. Mm -hmm. So so he didn't have to. Yeah, because he was working on that one for a little while, and it was mm -hmm. like hanging off that edge, and and he barely had to touch it, and it, yeah. and you know, and it and it came flying off. But yours was that that was the first time you struck that one, if I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that last yeah. one. You hit it off with one hit, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, I I might have been. I know the other ones I did. I think that one I hit it, and then it was close, mm -hmm. and then I might have been in the same boat, like it hit and it didn't quite go off, mm -hmm. and then. Because he had kept tapping at his. He was spinning. Right. And that right. was his deal. I know right. I think I got one hit on it, and then the second hit knocked it off. Yeah. So it was – either way, it was so close. I mean, it was it was very, very close. Like, you, you know, it could have went either way. So I definitely understand your your frustration. So what So what about the second one? How, how did you yeah. feel about that one? So uh, the second event was kind of a tug of war event. Um, you know, me and him both sitting on a platform with – um, um, with a rope that had a lot of, or chain and then it transitioned into rope. So you had to pull all the slack out and then eventually get uh, uh, from the chain to the rope and then pull the slack out and you got that box in the middle. Um, and that one was, you know, honestly at the, at the end of the day, I feel like it's just the, he, he was stronger in the upper body than I was to, to do what, you know, he needed to do to win. Cause it was dead in, you know, we both pulled the slack out about the same exact time. Right. Um, and, you know, my grip, you know, the way I train, I train to be strong for one rep. Um, he's more bodybuilding, so he trains for high repetition for hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it makes sense that he has, you know, the ability to handle that endurance a little bit better than I did. And that's kind of what showed. Um, now, definitely looking back and watching other competitors do the same event, I saw one young lady on the show. She, you know, was kind of in the same boat I was, but she ended up turning around and pulling the, you know, like basically facing the back against the box, but having the rope, you know, sitting here and using her legs to drive. And I think me being so strong in the legs, I think if I had I done something of that nature, I think I would have put myself in a much better position mm -hmm. uh, because my grip was just giving. And once that grip, yeah. I mean, I can't do anything else, you know, but that at least takes the weight off of my hands and puts it more on the shoulder and I can drive through that, that rope, um, mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's the only thing I could look back on and say, if I would have done that, maybe I would have had a different outcome yeah. um, other it's, than, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's amazing how, like, you can box yourself in. Because until you said that, and I didn't see that and the girl doing that, but until you said that, I would have never thought of something like that. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, you box yourself in because you're like, well, this is the way everyone does it. So, you know, and it takes someone just to be like, okay, well, how about this way? You know, so because, yeah, I would say, driving with your legs would be a you'd be so much more powerful everybody's legs are are stronger than their you know than their upper body no matter what you mm -hmm. so you know that's yeah that's definitely something um he did seem like he had some weight on you did, like was that the case that he did he have significant weight uh, on you? well i think he 
he had maybe a, maybe a few pounds on me. Mm-hmm. Honestly, he's not. He looks a lot bigger than me, but he was a lot leaner than I was. I see. Because he's actually uh, previously in prep for a show, um, bodybuilding show. So yeah, he, you know, he definitely, um, you know, he definitely had more muscle mass, I think, than I did. Mm-hmm. Had he been just a regular off-season weight, I think he'd be closer to, you know, 230, 240, mm-hmm. you know, body weight. And he was just a bigger guy than I was. Yeah. Uh, so definitely, I think muscle for muscle, he was a lot bigger than I was. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, compared to uh, some of the other competitors who weren't as, as big, you know, it may, have, it may have been a different outcome in that, in that particular mm-hmm. event. Um, but at the same time, you know, I can't really say that that was a big factor in it because – you know, I'm significantly stronger than a lot of people, but mm-hmm. you know, that didn't really show itself. But I, I really consider powerlifting to be very conditional strength and not functional. And so I think that's a big difference. Yeah, I can go in the weight room and squat seven hundred pounds, but can I, you know, pick up this couch or something in a very efficient way better than somebody right. else? I don't really know. Right, right. You know, so So you think it was like an endurance thing where you're because it did seem like you guys so you got you both got to the rope the same time. So speed wasn't an issue in that. And then you, you kind of went back and forth a little bit pulling the box. Um but then it looked like you 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 were just out of energy. Like it looked like you, your endurance kind of gave out a little bit. Yeah and it, it definitely did, and, and the, the show does not lend itself to true time. So mm-hmm. I'll tell you this, that um, pretty much 90%, unless it was just like a, a just an easy win for somebody, like they just, you know, gapped the other person, um, 90% of the people's episodes and competitions were a lot longer than they appeared in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes they can actually take make things that are shorter and make it look longer by replaying certain shots or adding a little bit more time there. But mostly, a lot of people would go on for like 15 minutes, and they mm-hmm. cut it down to like a five minute window, and which is crazy. So, right. um, it I don't know, you know, I don't I don't remember, you know, because I was in the heat of competition, but it felt a lot longer than you know my than that actually you know showed on the on the episode. But um, I definitely would say that the thing that gave was my forearms and my grip. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, that the rope just started sliding. It wasn't right. like he out muscled me it was i just wasn't strong enough long enough right right so. yeah i was talking to barley a little earlier today because i had an episode with him and he was saying his um i forgot the name of the competition but we're, with the door where you're hitting the door back and forth uh, the lunar eclipse the lunar yeah. eclipse like he said that took a, like um, like a little over 20 minutes so yeah. but it looked but on this sh- on the show it looked like it took a couple of minutes and now you yeah. know it was over so yeah definitely so um so at this point, so you said you moved, right, from Texas to uh, what, in Georgia, you're in Georgia now. So you're kind of closer to me. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. We're not that okay. far away. But so what, what made the, the transition? Why did you make that transition? So, yeah. Um, so what's really cool and um, I think probably the best thing about this show, um, honestly, I mean, I mean, being on national television is great. Meeting the Rock is great. Um, that exposure is wonderful. I got to do a lot of things with Borden's Milk um company they i've had some partnering with them on some stuff which has been super awesome um but the best thing i said before is um i got to meet some amazing people on the show um in in particular you know because they took 15 females 15 males um and i actually met a uh, a young lady um in la uh when we first did it and i met her and just very brief it was very very brief um we met um on our van ride uh, out of the, um, leaving to the airport to leave. I hadn't talked to her. I noticed her, but I hadn't even, you know, I never introduced myself or anything like that. We just so happened to be in the same van. And it was like a, you know, a 35, 40 minute drive to the airport. And we just talked and we hit it off. It was great. Um, and we just, uh, you know, nothing really happened from there. We kind of exchanged some social media. Um, and that was about it. Um, and then, you know, getting into the actual show, she made the show, Um, and we were both on it and we just kind of, you know, clicked, hit it off. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, after the airing the show, we, you know, we kept in touch. We actually, uh, you know, started a relationship and, uh, we're actually starting a family now. Um, so we're, we're expecting a a little boy and, uh, yeah. And, you know, so we're, you know, plan on getting married we live together, you know, and so that's, you know, ultimately I wanted to, I left Texas to come here to be with her because she's in the she's a first lieutenant nurse, uh, in the army. Okay. And so she's stationed here in, um, Fort Benning. Mm-hmm. And so she has to be here. 
Um, so I packed my stuff up and uh, left Texas and came to live with uh, her here for, you know, until she gets out and mm -hmm. to have her baby. It's amazing how like, you know, something like, like you said, this show, you know, you, you, you know, you, you want to go in there to win, right? Obviously, but yeah. you, you didn't get that opportunity, but it's like, but you won in like a much bigger way, you know? Yeah. So exactly. So that's amazing. Um, so is, are you, you guys, uh, are you planning to stay in Georgia or are you, or are you going to, yes. um, you know, I'm teaching up here. He's got a job working up here, uh, you know, with a great school. And, uh, you know, she's planning on getting out later in March. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and our baby's going to be due in October. And then on my, on my contract is till May. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be here for a little bit. You know, once my contract is out, that's summertime. Um, we've had some ideas of going back home uh, mm -hmm. to Texas where my folks are uh, talking about building a house out there and kind of getting a piece of land and kind of, you know, setting herself up to be there for you know, the next mm -hmm. five to 10 years that's kind of what we're thinking. But, you know, as obviously the show has shown me anything, you know, I'm, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, who's to say that we won't be here or not. Uh, Cause some of her folks are from up in Tennessee. Okay. So you know, we've talked about possibly moving in that area. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's all, you know, it's definitely a fluctuating plan, but right now we've definitely kind of sit around the idea of, of getting back to Texas. And, uh, you know, that's where, most of the families located that they can help us out with uh weston who who's our, our little boy okay, that'll be nice more. nice nice thing and by the way i didn't mention earlier but congratulations on, yeah. on the no thank baby. you yeah we're extremely excited mm -hmm. so um s s well I've, I've actually just not that long ago before the coronavirus i went and visited texas for the first time went to san antonio it was an amazing okay. place loved it it was great it was great that's where she was before uh, oh, okay yeah, because I was I was at Texas State, which is in San Marcos, which is like, you know, thirty minutes down the road. Mm -hmm. And she actually lived in San Antonio, and we actually had mutual friends that we never even knew about. Oh wow! Until we met, you know, she actually one of uh, my roommate actually tried to date her uh, in college. <laughs> so it was like this crazy, you know, big small circle. world. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so yeah, I, I mean, so I was originally. Uh, most of my folks, and I was kind of born and raised around the Houston area. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I went to school in San Marcos. So I was right down the road from Austin and San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And then I went to school up towards the Dallas area. So I've been around all four major cities in Texas. It's a beautiful nice. place. Yeah, it is. It is. I was very happy to go and visit. So let me ask you this. As we're wrapping up, I wanted to ask you this. You're a teacher. How are you guys, is your school like in, you know, in now? Or are you doing it online? Or like, how is that working? So we're still in the summer. We're still currently in the summer, but okay. um, um, but during when the virus happened, I was still uh, employed at, in Chapel Hill, which is mm -hmm. in Texas. But I was staying here, and I mean, luckily, but unluckily, I could be here and still teach. Um, everything was online, um, so all lesson plans, everything was submitted online. But now here in Georgia, we have plans to start school as as normal. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real small town up there, so you know. Uh, you know, and it's kind of secluded. Mm -hmm. So I guess they feel really comfortable in that. It's a small sure. town feel. Uh, but yeah, so we will be resuming. I've been going to practices every Tuesday and Thursday. Now okay. we still check those kids out. Like, um, you know, when we do work on the field, that's fine. But when we go inside a building, uh, temperatures are checked to make mm -hmm. sure, you know, that nobody's, you know, uh, has any symptoms. And, you know, we're still being cautious. Uh, all our warm ups and everything has done. Um, you know, all the athletes are further apart from one another. Um, when we do any activities, we make sure we have a lot of space. Yeah. Definitely <clears throat> keeping our distance, right. but we're still going to get training in and getting our work in. Well, good. Yeah, I was I was curious because you know a lot of people have um, lost uh, you know their work and and things like that. And I know teachers in general are under appreciated and you know and let's just say um, you know underpay whatever you get paid you probably yeah. don't get paid enough to deal with what you're dealing with mm -hmm. and uh so i was curious about that but i'm glad that you know it looks like everything is going to go back to you know normal for you i wish you all the best yeah i'm very very fortunate as an educator actually uh haley and i haley's the woman i'm living with right. uh you know, her being a nurse, very fortunate for her to still have a job. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very fortunate to have a job and us to be in a very good place, despite yeah. the country's um, standings. Right. So I definitely, you know, I, I can't, you know, to the point of, you know, 
teachers don't quite get the recognition that uh, we deserve. You know, I will tell you that we get it in other places. While it may not be monetary value, mm -hmm. you get it in a very significant moments with athletes and students that you will never have anywhere else. Absolutely. I think that in itself um, speaks volumes and it's, mm -hmm. and it's why I, you know, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I had such a, a difficult upbringing with my mother. And then when my dad came into my life, you know, he, he came in and, 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 you know, really influenced everything and made me everything that I am. I always say he's the man, or I'm the, the man behind the man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm who I am today because of who he is. Right. And so that's, that's the big thing that fuels me as an educator and as a coach is I want to be that difference that he was in my life. I want to be that as an educator. And I think we get a tremendous opportunity um, in, in our jobs to be able to do that. And so that's one of the best things that I love. And that's why I'll, I'll probably never, you know, not be working with athletes or students in some capacity for the rest of my life, you know, regardless of, of the income. Because right. some people, you know, wake up and go to jobs because they make a bunch of money. They don't love it, but they make money. Right. Right. I just love what I do. And, uh, yeah, I don't get paid a tremendous amount, but it's, it's not really about that, uh, you know, at, at that right. point. Right. No, I, I completely understand. And it's uh... – how can I put this? It's one of those things. It's, it's nice that you have this kind of passion for it because, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's some teachers that I've come across that are like you that are, mm -hmm. that are amazing like that. They have that kind of like drive and others that have kind of either where they're burnt out or whatever the case may be, they don't. And it's, it's, it's nice that you have that kind of, you know, that kind of feeling about being an educator. I just, we were talking about history before I was, you know, wrestling in high school. And I remember like, there's, you know, my, my history teacher made a huge impact on my life. Um, my wrestling coach, same thing. So all those people, I still keep in contact with and still remember. And this was, you know, over 20 years ago. For me. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, uh, it's definitely, um, uh, a labor of love, you know? So. Yeah. And maybe, you know, who knows, I am still young. You know, some of the teachers that, you know, get very complacent have been in it for, you know, 20 plus right. years. Right. Um, you know, I'm only in my second year. So, sure. I mean, sure. Come talk to me in 10 years and see if I don't. <laughs> we'll do hey, another, po we'll do yeah, another podcast. Yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. Where are they now? You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's but, funny. That's I know funny. I love it now and I, I definitely don't want to give it up. So yeah, for sure. Well, Hey, I really appreciate you coming on to the show. I know you're, you're a busy guy. You got a lot going on. got a family, you know, to take care of. So we're very thankful for that. Thank you so much. Well, I greatly appreciate it. And I, I I'm so happy to be able to come on and talk. Okay. Hey guys, if you liked the episode, uh, like, and subscribe below. And again, thank you so much. You have a great rest of your day. Yes, sir. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.